Now let's escape out of our door command. The next thing I would like us to do is to clean up our interior wall layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back up to the architectural tab, click on our architectural wall. Because the five inch generic wall was the last wall that we used, we can continue to lay out with this wall. The top of wall constraint is still in order. I'm going to come in and without regard for the dimension just lay out an interior wall in about this approximate location. I'm going to hit escape. The next thing I do want us to do while we're still in the wall command, I've only hit escape once, so I want us to come up to our modify panel. I want us to click on our split tool. This will split a wall. We're going to come in here where we're going to have an open plan admin suite and I want us to click once just to cut this wall. Now this wall is in two pieces. Then we're going to come up here and I would like us to use our trim tool. This is our trim tool. Works very similar to AutoCAD. And we're going to trim this wall with this wall. And if you notice I'm selecting the portion of the wall that I want to keep. That's important to remember when you're using the trim command here in Revit. And we're going to repeat this one more time on this side of the plan. I'm going to trim here and I'm going to trim on this side of the wall where I would like to keep. The next thing I would like us to do now that we have modified our interior walls is to go ahead and lay out our rooms. So I'm going to escape twice, come up to our architectural tab again, and I'm going to come down to our room and area panel. And right now, I want us to insert a room in the areas that we have. I'm going to click on the room tab. By default, if you look at our contextual ribbon, you'll see that tag on placement is highlighted, which means it's going to give me a tag as I place the room. If I'm not interested in the tag, then I can always insert a room without the tag on placement being highlighted, and we will not have a tag in any of our spaces. But for the purposes of our lab, we do want to insert it with a tag. So let's leave that highlighted. I'm going to click here and insert our rooms. See, Revit will actually allow you to snap and line up your room tags. And I'd like to add one here for the corridor. However, because our admin suite is open to the corridor, the room originally wants to find the border. And our border extends into that room. So we're going to need We'll leave this room placed, but we're going to need to make an edit to our room. So I'm going to escape twice now, come back up to the architectural tab, back over to our room and area panel, and we're going to need to use our room separator. When we click on our room separator line, it's going to bring us into a draw mode again, similar to what you've seen with the wall tool. But this wall room separator will allow me to draw the line where I want my open plan to begin. And draw the boundary where we do not have walls creating a boundary for us. Now you see when I highlight this room the boundary does not extend into our open plan admin area. So now we can go back up to our architectural tab over to our room and area panel and we can add a room for our admin suite as well. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to hit escape to get out of my room command and you'll see all of my rooms they're numbered sequentially based on the order that I place the rooms. However, 
Revit does not give them a name. So we're going to double click on each one of these tags and insert the name for the space that we have. I'm going to come over to my room tag, click once to highlight the room tag, then click one more time over the name. I'm going to change all of these room names. Classroom 1, click again, and click on the room, classroom 2, I'm going to abbreviate this M slash P for my multi-purpose room, hit enter, Come click in the admin, give this space an abbreviation as well, hit enter, Now we've renamed all of our rooms. The next thing we need to do is create a section view for our project. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this level one floor plan just so that you can see. You can see I still have, I'm in my modify room tags command so I need to escape. We're going to come over to our view tab and click on our section. I want to generate a section through this area of the building and I'm going to click and drag like such. Now by default Revit is going to give me an extents for my section view. This grip you can click and drag to control just how much you want to see beyond the cut line. You can access this section view one of two ways. Once you deselect your section, and it's important to deselect the section line, you can double click the call out, which will open this section view. I will go back to the level one floor plan. Or I can access this view directly from my project browser. You'll now see a sections category, and by default, this is section one. So there's two ways to access this new section view that we've generated. Next, we are going to generate the two camera views that we asked for in this lab. I'm going to click back on our architectural ribbon just as back to our st starting point. I'm going to come up here to our quick access toolbar because that's the quickest way to access our camera view. Click our drop down and come down to camera. Once again I'm going to specify the station point for this camera which for the interior camera was my multi-purpose space and I'm going to generate a view targeting and extents in this direction. I'm going to need to zoom zoom out a little bit and extend the group, extend my grips so that I can see in that direction. I'm going to come back to my level one floor plan, click out in my view space just to deselect that camera view and we're going to generate one more camera on the exterior. I'm going to click from my station point and add a camera once again in this direction. Extend my grips.
Next, I want to go back to my level one floor plan. And let's make sure that we rename these camera views that we've created. So I'm going to expand our 3D views. I'm going to right click on the 3D view one, come up here to show camera. Show camera, my 3D one camera is the interior one. Right here in my properties, I can actually change the name of this view as well. Or right click in the browser. I'm going to rename this interior camera and click apply. I'm going to click show camera just to see the placement of my camera too. Verify, come up here to properties again and rename this camera exterior camera as well. and click apply. I'm going to click out in space which will bring me back to my home tab. The last thing we want to do is we want to create the axonometrics that we asked for. That is also accessible from the quick access toolbar. I'm going to click on default 3D view. My default 3D view when I click that it's going to bring me to a view where I'm currently looking at the north. You're going to have to remember to come down to the project browser and rename this view or Revit will not allow you to create a second axonometric view. I'm going to rename this front axon and I'm going to come back up here and click on default 3D view to create one more but this time because we wanted to look at the back side of our schematic design so far we're going to need to rotate this we're going to use our steering cube to do this and I'm going to click on the opposite side which you can see you can click on these points Revit will allow you to click and drag the model slowly but I knew the angle that I was shooting for if you click on any of these corners that will bring me back right now I'm looking at the front another angle from the front and now I'm looking at a back angle and to save this view I'm, once again I'm going to right click and rename this view back axon.